What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Willie the Kid. This is Eastwick Boxing Talk, man, and we're back with another one. So, Jared Swift heard, and his team has stated, has come out lately saying that they would like to fight none other than Kell Brook. The said Kell Brook, they got this mantle. I don't want to say dismantle because he was in the fight, but he did get his eye socket broken by Errol Spence Jr. That was a 147. They're trying to push this uh, uh, Brook, that is, this new initiative that he's bad at 154 and so forth and so forth. But those type of eye injuries, man, they're tricky. And they can come back to hunt you in the fight game, man. We all know this very well. So... Jared, Jared Hurd, who's a physically big guy for 154, right? He imposes his will on people. And usually just hangs around, hangs around until he gets you out of there late in the fight, man. Um, Hurd uh, did a, had a hell of a fight against Aries Landy Lara. Uh, they have, the WBA has called for a, um, a rematch in that fight. Whether or not Lara even wants a rematch is yet to be seen. It was a good fight. It was 114-113 across the board. I can understand him calling now a, a Kell Brook and wanting to face a Kell Brook. It, it gives him a good payday. A very good payday, especially if you go over to England. So, I, could, I get it. I just don't see at this point in Kell Brook, no disrespect to him at all. I think he's a phenomenal talent, but at this point in his career, with the injuries that he has had, can I, can taking on like a Jared Hurd for a title shot, could that be too much? Too soon? And that could possibly be the point, ladies and gentlemen. I, I do not want to see the man get seriously hurt in there. So already got steel plates under both eyes. He has to set up steals because... Uh, He's faced uh, Gennady Golovkin, which was a boogeyman at the time where he faced him. And he's also faced Errol Spence, another boogeyman. So, Kell Brook has taken on two guys that nobody in boxing wanted to see. But he took on the challenge. So you got to give him credit for that. You got to tip your hat to him. But at the same time, man, um, Jerry Swift heard he's not like a... Uh, a guy that you could say, oh, man, well, this guy's a hell of a boxer or anything like that. Nah, man, he's just big. You're going to hit him, and he's going to keep coming and coming and coming, and he's going to impose his will on you. He's going to wear you down and try to take you out late. Uh, he doesn't seem like a big puncher, but uh, he's an accumulative puncher, which means that those same punches that you were getting hit earlier in the fight are going to hurt a whole lot more in the eighth, ninth, tenth round of a fight. So... I don't know if it's something that Kell Brook and his team will be interested in pursuing or exploring. Jerry Hurd has made it clear that he would like a shot. He would like to face Kell Brook. I'm pretty sure he wouldn't mind going over to the UK to make it happen in Sheffield. But uh, if I'm Kell Brook and his team, man, I will really, really think about that twice. Uh, it could be a case where uh, the payday might not be there for it. Or, you know, the risk might be higher than the reward. So if I'm that, and I really think about that. Uh, Jared Hurd, uh, who I really want him to want to see him face, will be like a battle of the Giants. Uh, Jaime Munguia and Jared Hurd, two big cats that you look at them and you say, "How the hell are they junior middleweights?" But they are. Man, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. This is your boy Willie the Kid. We'll be back with another one soon. One.